engines really fail at V1? Well, in the simulator they do, okay? And in the real world, they could. In fact, in the real world, they could fail any time, of course. But we train it at V1 because regulatory speaking, that is the most critical point whereby to meet transport category certification standards, FAR or 14 CFR part 25, the engine has to be able to fly away single engine with a failure at the most critical point, V1, at gross weight. That is why we train it where we train it. Now let's talk about engines for a moment because the reality of it is, I'm just using this, happened to be the model plane we had here in this classroom, so that's the one I'm using, it's a 767. The engine is hanging off the wing. And when we're on the ground, for the most part, the engine does hang from the wing. But once we apply takeoff thrust, I think it's probably a little more accurate to say that the airplane hangs on to the engine. <laughs> and if you don't follow what I'm saying, imagine for a moment this engine on the ground producing very minimal idle thrust. It's just hanging out here on the wing. And the moment we apply takeoff thrust, it wants to go. And in doing so, it pulls on the aircraft. And so the airplane really is hanging on to the engine. And so because what I'm getting to is there's actually a, a change in forces, if you would, in how that, air, that engine is being held to the uh, aircraft. And in addition to that, there's also some changes thermally that are happening to the engine. You see, most times if an engine is going to fail, it's going to happen when there are several changes, thermal or by force. When we apply takeoff thrust, we're taking an engine from idle to and, and a relatively low temperature internally to somewhat of a higher temperature. And the same could be said when we get uh, after the takeoff phase into the climb phase, we have a thrust reduction. We're again having a change fairly considerable in the internal temperature of the engine's uh, temperature. So ultimately, if you're going to have an anomaly with an engine, it might be on the initial spool up on takeoff, or it could be later on in the thrust reduction, or basically when there is a large change, whether in the form of application or reduction with thrust. So uh, to that end, when is it most likely that you would experience some engine problem? As I already said, maybe when you apply thrust. This is why on the takeoff roll, I apply thrust judiciously and nice and slowly and evenly and make sure the engines spool up because if you're going to have any engine anomaly, that may be a prime place to see it as opposed to at V1 where the engine has already been running at uh, at takeoff thrust for quite some time. It's not a sudden change per se, right? Doesn't mean it can't happen. And of course we train it and keep an eye out for it, be ready to apply rudder input, etc. right? But just be mindful when you're applying thrust for takeoff, be looking at your engine gauges and be ready for any directional control problem associated with the failure of an engine. Same could be said when we later on have that thrust reduction after we're through the takeoff phase and more so in the climb phase at the thrust reduction altitude. So when do engines fail? Whenever they want. But if I had to pinpoint it down a little bit more, I would say there's probably a higher probability or more likelihood that they would fail when there's a significant change in forces and internal temperatures that come with the large application or reduction of thrust. Juan and Joe, your friends at Training Program Success, OneStepPrep.com. We'll see you in another video.